When I think of cusp, I think of people standing at the, the borderline between one state and another, looking forward, looking back, looking sideways and pondering their next step. The first image that pops into my head for some reason is, is like a cocoon, so waiting for something to emerge. When I think of the word cusp, what comes to mind immediately is custard with a lisp because custard is something that's kind of just coming to be set. It's kind of still fluid and, and kind of still molten. One of the things that connects us as people, uh, connects us to other people and between us and objects and spaces, is this invisible substance called sound. Because it's so pervasive and so present, it becomes this very useful almost force field that you can use to draw people together and to create areas uh, where things can occur. We're working with sound or the sonic, the spatial and the social. And we pull together small and large groups of people, participants from various walks of life uh, to create these interconnected sound works uh, made up of human bodies in space. So not traditional performance spaces necessarily, but an industrial warehouse or an open car park, places that you wouldn't normally expect to resonate sonically. And then audiences and public get to mingle in and through and around the kind of resulting immersive, ambient, evolving sound field that's produced. So in terms of ambience, immersion, porosity, what we're dealing with there are kind of non-hierarchical ways of reconnecting ourselves to our surroundings, to the sonic surrounding. So we move beyond things like inside and outside, expert and amateur, skilled and unskilled. It's not just professionally trained musicians that own an instrument that we work with. It's not just certain sort of spaces already designated for culture. We love going to an open field and finding ways that everyone, if they'd like to, can really find a way to participate meaningfully, uh, working in situ. In a way, it's a form of community art, it's a form of participatory art, uh, it's about oral architecture, uh, it's about composition and uh, public art. It's really exciting that we've been invited to be part of the CUSP exhibition and Supercritical Mass is taking somewhat of a different approach because rather than being a performance installation that happens one-off in one location, we are exploring the possibility of a multi-channel video work that documents or mediates a performance installation that will prepare up off-site somewhere and then through multiple screens bring that into the exhibition space itself. And so that's a really exciting chance for us to explore another modality of the way we work, as well as still try and conjure that sense for the audience that as they move into this multi-channel video work, they're getting a sense of multiplicity and of interaction with something that's quite uh, intimate and particular, but also ambient and vast with the way the videos are interacting together. Designing into the next decade, uh, Supercritical Mass is, is, I guess, building a very robust uh, set of structures. Trying to get a lot bigger and have you know, really massive uh, masses in massive spaces. But also we're interested in actually the other end of the scale and the intimate scale and very small masses of maybe even two people and seeing how that um, intimacy can also um, provide a sense of community. One of the things that Supercritical Mass is trying to do is to design contexts and situations um, and frameworks for behaviour and I guess maybe that's a bit of a broad trend that I've seen in design that it's more about almost fashioning better futures for us uh, rather than uh, something which may potentially feel a little more like a, a decorative element, if you like. I think Supercritical Mass touches on some issues that are going to be really important for the world. Um, our population across the world is becoming more and more urbanised. There's literally 
hundreds of thousands of people that migrate to cities each week and that more and more of the world's population will be based in cities rather than rural settings. So we're going to have to work out ways to get along when more and more of us are in the same space. And that's where there's issues of the kind of sound fields that we're operating in, how the noise works, how we attune ourselves or don't to the ambiences that we create around us.